Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Over the years, I've done tons of videos demonstrating how to edit a portrait in Lightroom Classic. And more recently, I've done videos demonstrating Lightroom's newer portrait masking tools. Now, personally, I don't edit a lot of portraits in Lightroom, mainly because I don't like the way Lightroom handles a person's skin. To smooth a person's skin in Lightroom, all you can do is add a bit of a blur to it. I prefer to use a higher-end technique, most often frequency separation. And because of that, I'll use a plugin with Lightroom to edit a portrait. And I usually use one or two. If I have a lot of time, I'll use Photoshop because I find I get my best portrait edits in Photoshop. If I don't have a lot of time or I have a really big job to edit, I'll use On One's Portrait AI. Uh, with On One's Portrait AI, I could soften the skin the way I want to with frequency separation. Now, another option, although I don't use it that often, is Luminar Neo. Luminar Neo has a lot of great portrait editing tools. Now, in the past, I've done videos on all of those applications, demonstrating how to use them as standalone apps to edit a portrait and how to use them as plugins in Lightroom Classic. There's another app, though, where you could edit a portrait and get a high-end edit, and that is Radiant Photo. I've done videos on Radiant Photo before, but I've never done a video demonstrating how to use Radiant Photo as a Lightroom plugin to edit a portrait. And that's what we're going to be doing today. I have this image, and this is an image, um, it's an Adobe stock image, that I often used to edit a portrait. It's just a good image to show portrait editing techniques with. Now it is unedited, it's straight from Adobe. Actually it is edited slightly, I cropped it. I cropped it in tighter. So that's it. So I'm ready, I want to edit this portrait in Radiant Photo. To do that, just right click right on the image, go down to Edit In, and go down to Radiant Photo. Now, I just have the default settings here. It's a TIFF Pro Photo RGB, 16 bits per component, a resolution 240, and compression zip. That's the default settings when you install Radiant Photo. So I'll just stay with those. I'm not going to change them. And I am going to edit a copy with Lightroom Adjustments because that Lightroom Adjustment was cropping it. So I'm going to click Edit. So it will open it up into Radiant Photo. And those of you not familiar with Radiant Photo, Radiant Photo is going to actually examine the image, determine what's in it, and it's going to add a preset that they think is applicable. Now, because this has a person in it, you can see over here on the left-hand side where it says Smart Presets, it added a People preset. And if we move this slider, there's Before and there's After. And you can see it brightened it up quite a bit. Did some skin smoothing, but not a lot. Now, I'm going to leave this all the way to the left so we could see the After now, if you're in a hurry, they have other presets as well. Over here on the left, you could see under presets, we have Radiant Portrait. If I roll that open, you could see there's a lot of different ones. There's Light Powder. There's Clear Skin. There's Balanced Portrait. There's Balanced Portrait Plus. You could see that one did a lot of skin smoothing, more than I prefer to do. There's Studio. You could see also, if I go back to Balanced Portrait Plus, it's slimmed face as well. I don't care to do that either. Go to Natural Catch Light. That's mainly just a, a preset for a person's eyes. Middle Age. Rugged Skin. Rugged Skin is something you might want to use if they have a lot of you know, uh, defects or blemishes on their face. Uh, you may prefer to use that. Now, I'm not going to use a preset. So even if it came in and it just added this uh, People Smart preset right away, what I would do is I'd reset it. Over here, you see it doesn't do much because it really does add um, kind of some pre-editing to the image. To get to that, what you're going to do is go over here on the right and you see the little person icon. Click on that and you'll see that it already enhanced the eyes. You can see how that's active and I could turn it off. And there's a before and there's an after. It's just a slight enhancement. I removed or softened or made a little less the dark circles under her eyes. There's before and there's after and so on. So I'm not going to go through them all and just show you before afters of each step. But let's edit this as I would. Um, typically, I don't do a heavy edit, but I, I guess maybe I'll do just a slightly heavier edit 
than I typically do. So you get an idea of what you can do with Radiant Photo on a portrait. Now I'll start, um, if it didn't find the face properly, so it's not able to, it's not seemingly able to enhance the eyes or move dark circles or do anything like that, you can manually add a face here. Uh, obviously found the face okay. Now, if there are is a red eye problem, so you used a flash and you have red eye, you could click there and it will automatically remove it. If you don't want to use any of these adjustments for eyes at all, you could just turn them off right here. So there's a like a master on off switch for that. But I am going to enhance the eyes. I'll drag the slider to the far right so you can see what happens. They start to look like marbles. I don't care for that. So we'll tone that down a bit. Now you can enlarge the eyes uh, sometimes. Oh, uh, depending on what focal length you use, it may make a person's eyes look relatively small compared to what they actually are. And you could do that. Uh, you could see it looks ridiculous here. Uh, so I'll reset it back to where it was. Um, if by chance, for some reason, their eyes look large and you need to make them smaller, you could do that as well by moving this to the left. Fix it, put it back to its default setting. Uh, dark circles, she did have um, some dark circles there. You can see there's the before. So I'm going to tweak that up a little bit and try to remove those a little better. See, if you go too far, it just doesn't look right. So I'm just going to leave a little bit there. Now, catch lights. Uh, she does have a nice catch light already in her eye. The photographer who took this obviously had a, a light to camera right, and you can see the catch light there. Um, I am going to just supplement that, though. You have an outdoor light. You have a beauty dish light. You can see you could add it. You can make it brighter by moving that to the right. Uh, let's see, a softbox. Kind of like the softbox a little bit. Uh, ring light, ring light I don't care for on this image, umbrella. Um, if we go to the softbox, and I just want to pull it down a little bit, just to add just a little more light into her eyes, I think that just makes it look a little more interesting. Now, I, I almost never, as a matter of fact, I could say I never uh, contour a person's face, ever. But I'll just show you these controls. So I'll turn this on. We go to face contouring, and I move it to the right. You can see how it brings kind of her chin and cheekbones in. If I move it to left, how it will push them out. You may want to do this if you're using like a wide angle lens and it distorted a person's facial features. You would use this, or I, if in that instance, I would probably use this to try to make their face look like it actually looks. Typically, I don't uh, do face contouring at all. So we're going to turn that off. Uh, we have teeth whitening. This is something I probably would do though. So I'll move it to the right now. If you go too far, I mean, it looks like they're capped. It looks fake. You can just whiten them a little bit. Lip sharpening. A lot of times you like the lips to be nice and sharp. We'll turn that on. You do have a uh, medium. See, it's just, just different ways to sharpen the li a person's lips. I think that's a little bit too sharp. Just like that. Now, here's the important part, the skin smoothing. This is why I don't use Lightroom, mainly because Lightroom really just blurs the skin. It takes clarity down, and it just gives a little bit of a blur to a person's skin. I don't care for that, so we'll turn on smooth. And you can see here, it's not actually blurring the skin. It's doing some higher end type, uh, maybe frequency separation type look to a person's skin. So I think it looks more natural, but I still don't like to do it too much. Now you have the option to smooth the person's face only or the face, the full body. So if you have a full body shot, this image before I cropped it, it had her shoulders or arms or elbows in the shot. I might want to use um, full body on that. But since mainly just her face is showing here, we'll do that. Now you have the smoothing type. You have subtle, default. It takes a second to kick in. Go to super smooth and you can see it smoothed it a little bit more. I'm just going to go with subtle. It's even a little higher than I typically like it, but we'll leave it at that. She does have kind of a blemish here, a little bit there, nothing major. We'll turn this on, see if we could soften those. Yep, soften that up quite a bit. Shine remover, you could see that she has shine on her forehead a little bit. We'll turn that on, and I'll just zap it all the way up, and you can see what it does. It kind of looks like the makeup is caked on too much. So we're just going to just soften that a little bit. Now, this is way more than I typically would smooth a person's skin. So I wanted to show you this, and I'm going to actually do it the way I probably typically would do it. 
something like that more, all right? Now, you have the option to apply makeup to a person uh, if you want to. We'll turn this on. You go to skin toning. You could turn this up. You can see how it's kind of adding this kind of white base to a person's skin, kind of a porcelain look. You could try the different colors and these foundation colors, uh, warm, tan. It's not good. Of course, I do have the slider all the way up. So you would tweak it down. So you have that one there. I don't care for either of these. But you could say, you know, just subtly change the person's uh, skin tone, or you could change it in a greater way if you want to. Um, you also could dial in a custom tone so you don't have to use one of the preset foundation colors. You could come in and move the use saturation and brightness sliders to dial in your own. You could add some blush. Blush will be on her cheeks, right? So we could pick a blush color. Let's just pick something that's going to be obvious and you'll see it uh, there. And we'll do the amount. And you can see how it's adding this blush to her cheeks. I, I don't care for it. Blush. I don't care for any of the makeup. So as a matter of fact, we'll turn that right off. So there is my edit, and here's our before after. There's before, and there's after. Now, typically what I do is I'll walk away for a while because my eyes and my brain get fatigued looking at it, and I'll tend to overdo it. And I find that if I walk away and just focus my eyes on something else and take my mind off of the edit for a while, when I come back and look at it, 99 times out of 100, it's going to be overdone to the way I really wanted it to be. So then I'd come in and I'd dial everything back. In this case, I really could dial everything back, like the eyes are just a little bit too over the top. I think uh, the face, the teeth whitening is okay, I guess. The skin smoothing, um, it's a little bit too much. I think the blemish removal is, is what kind of makes it a little more over the top, pull that down. And again, we'll do before, after. There's before, and there's after. There's before, and there's after. Now let's just say, I like this, and we're done. You click save. It will save it. It will return us to Lightroom, and you'll have this image in Lightroom. It'll be a second edit. So here's the original image, and here's our edit from Radiant Photo. So that's another option. If you don't like the portrait AI uh, tools, or the tools that are in on one portrait AI, or you don't like Luminar Neo, or you don't like Photoshop, this is another option to edit portraits other than Lightroom, of course. You could do masking in Lightroom and do edits there as well. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.